So, recently I've decided to use this uh, programming language, PureScript, which is a strongly typed functional programming language that compiles to TypeScript, uh, sorry, to JavaScript. The reason why I wanted to use it is because I've always been fascinated by this and I never actually had uh, a try to go. So let's start, um, if you are interested, uh, keep watching and let's have a look at what we can do. So, of course, the first thing that we need to do is the installation, which can be done with npm, which is basically, it's gonna work on any operating system. So you just do npm install das g pure script and Spago, or you can use uh, other tools such as Brew if you're on Mac or uh, apt install if you're on Linux. So on my machine uh, I already have everything installed so let's run the command which is gonna run very shortly. Now while this is happening I'm gonna explain that Spago essentially is the build tool and testing tool while PureScript is the language itself. Let's start by creating a new project Let's create a PureScript folder, PureScript 101, and we are gonna CD into this uh, uh, this folder, and then we're gonna run the command spago init, which is gonna initialize this folder with all the dependencies that we need, and then run the command spago build, which is gonna install the dependencies that have been installed. So it's a little bit like in React if you do a create React app and uh, you have to do an npm install after it. Plus there is the test already added, so when we're gonna see the folder, we're gonna see that we have a test folder as well as a source folder. This is our uh, VS Code view. Let's make the text a little bit bigger so that we can have a look. Um, now, before we go ahead, I would like to show you which are the extensions that I've installed to work better with PureScript. The two extensions are PureScript ID, which essentially gives uh, autocomplete, um, allows you to add um, types automatically, etc. And then there is the language support, which instead has the grammar and does the syntax highlighting for pure script. These are the two that I found the most useful uh, these days while I was trying uh, the language. Now in our folder we have some uh, folders like output which is um, when you run a build this is where the files go, the source which is our uh, files, prelude which is the standard library for pure script and uh, finally we have this main log and as you can see it's like um, I think it's a, it's a joke because a spago spaghetti and that looks like a play or spaghetti then we have a test folder with another main uh, where we add uh, where we can very easily add tests uh, finally we have two files which is called packages and uh, spago.dal files the one that we actually are interested the most is the spago file uh, which essentially is going to specify which dependencies we want to have in our project now before we go ahead i want to show you the REPL of the language to run the REPL of the language we open a terminal and we run the command spago REPL. Okay, so as you can see, uh, as soon as we run the command, our uh, prelude is actually importing a number uh, of items. And we can run uh, the help command, which uh, shows this uh, command, but which are the main ones? So of course, the quit function, that uh, semicolon quit or semicolon q, reload, clear, and paste. Reload is gonna reload all the important modules and discarded bindings. So what does it mean? If we have a binding, for example, a equal 1, a equal 2, is gonna run in an error because uh, type pure script is an um, immutable language. Therefore, what happens is that when you redefine something with the same value, then this is no, this cannot be done. Therefore, if I run the reload, I can actually run again a equal to because the a has been removed. However, there is another one which is clear, and the difference is that one uh, the clear removes the bindings while um, reload uh, reload removes the bindings while clear removes the um, also the imports that you've done. So I can do here import prelude import main and then uh, this is going to import those packages and now if I'm gonna do a clear these imports are gonna be removed. So everything we've done with the prelude which is the standard library is not there anymore. So if we try to add a very simple function for example an add function that takes two numbers and sums them up this is gonna complain. However before we actually see the example another quick one is paste which allows us to do a multi-line and what can we do? Uh, we can do an add function, which is exactly what 
saying earlier, which is of type int, it takes an integer, another integer, and returns an integer. So add a and b is equal add a plus b. And now with the command d, we're gonna close this terminal. But as you can see, unknown operator because my prelude uh, hasn't been imported. So what can I do? I need to do import prelude. Um, as we saw being done automatically, we can actually open um, the REPL for the first time. So let's run again, import prelude with a capital P. And now we can define again add a plus b, a plus b is not complaining anymore. So we can just close uh, this declaration and now we can actually run a um, the type which has been, uh, uh, which is um, we're gonna be shown by the T or type expression. So we can do type add or type T add. It's gonna give you the type of the of the expression following the type. So I can do add two and three and this is my add function. Let's quit, let's go back to our uh, uh, main editor. We need a couple of, uh, of extensions here, which are foldable, traversable, and lists, because we're gonna try to solve the first problem in Project Taylor. I'm just following uh, uh, the guy in the pure script repository. That's all I'm doing here. I don't wanna do anything fancy. I just wanna see the main things that I've learned uh, by following that guide. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please leave a thumb up. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, leave a comment below. Okay, so here we have tests, and uh, as you can see, we want to do an assert. To do this assert, we actually need to import a module. It's essentially the same thing that will happen, for example, in C Sharp, when you do XUnit, you actually need the module to be installed. Or in um, TypeScript, maybe you're going to use a test. What we actually want to install is assert. I was wrong here while I was running this command. We just need to do spag install assert, and that's all we need to do. So the assert package has been added and now we can do assert that one is equal to one. And by the way, the parentheses are not necessary. So we import s.assert and in particular we want to import the assert module. Now the reason this is not being picked up in case this happens to you is because the editor hasn't been um, preloaded. Therefore, uh, all you have to do is to basically load once more um, the editor and the error is gonna go away. So let's just close, let's open the editor again. And the editor, it's gone. Now to run the test, we just have to run Spago test. It's giving us some errors, but this is just because we haven't yet used all those packages. Now, let's see if our set gonna fail with a fake number, where like two equals to one, which is of course false. And let's start running, uh, let's start writing some actual code for our project Euler. So let's create a new file called euler.purs. And now at the, at the top, we're gonna see the module name Euler, which if you have multiple folders, it's gonna be split by dots, similar to C sharp, for example. And essentially the way it works is that somewhere else, we can also do module Euler here. Then we can do import Euler somewhere else in the, in the project. So actually, we can actually do all of this inside um, the terminal with the REPL. To do this, we need to import some uh, libraries, which is data list. And let's have a look at the range function where you give if two numbers is gonna generate a list of integers between those numbers. Um, in the project teller, we need one between zero and 999. So we're gonna define our list NS as a range between zero and 999. The next bit that we need is a filter function that is gonna find all the multiples of three and five. So we have this filter function is gonna take a value through a lambda function in this case, which is a, a defined through the backlash and then our arguments, in this case, just one, which is the number being analyzed right now, um, which is H1 of the numbers in the list, followed by an arrow, which is the lambda version, which is the equivalent of the uh, fat arrow in JavaScript. Now this n, now we need to run the mod function. Now the way we, you're gonna write mod here is gonna be mod n and 3, which is execute mod of 3 on n, but this is, it could be a little bit uh, ambiguous if you are from the JavaScript world. So if you use backticks, instead you can use it as an operator, like a plus sign to be simple. So n mod 3 is equal to 0 or n mod 5 is equal to 0 using um, this expression and this is applied on the n list that we just wrote earlier. Now, to understand exactly what I mean by that backtick, um, let's have a quick look at what that means. The mod function written here is essentially the same as if I have an add function, like the one I wrote earlier, where I can give two values, three and five. So this is the same thing can be done for the mod. So if I do mod of three and um, two, 
or in JavaScript you want to put the comma so like an expression in pure script you just do three okay so we run this function 99 and 3 and it's zero. okay within that list but if i write now mod in the back tick i can use it as an operator and this is an is called an infix operator so this is gonna run the function between those two thanks to those back ticks and that's a very powerful uh, function let's have a look at second example if i make a function add a and b and i give it a plus b and i do add two and three it's gonna give me five but if i want to use add as a plus i can actually do two add in back ticks and three and it's gonna run exactly the same it's gonna give me five and you can use uh, the two styles depending on which one you're gonna find yourself more comfortable with all right so let's have a let's go back to our uh, Euler project and let's write some code so first of all we're gonna use the range function and now we can actually import the function range with data dot list and you here differently than in uh, TypeScript you have each time to save the file otherwise the editor won't actually pick the fact that you added the import even though you can see it um, in the buffer now here I imported lazy but actually want it from the normal list function. We're gonna do the filter and we're gonna write the same expression I wrote earlier. So we're gonna do the lambda, the lambda function which takes a number n and then for each number it's gonna do the mod of the number n3 or to be equal to 0 or the module of n and 5 to also be equal to 0. And this is gonna be applied on the list ns that I just wrote there. So it's gonna ns in here and these are the multiples. And finally we can generate the answer which is essentially Essentially, um, the sum all of those numbers, and there is a built-in function for a num uh, for a sum of numbers from the list. So if I um, if I go here, I can actually add this one in the foldable uh, package that we installed just earlier. Now let's have a look at what our uh, awesome extensions can do. As you can see, I have some uh, auto suggestions above there, and these auto suggestions can actually go and uh, apply um, a better value. So I just click on those, and they're gonna get the value. So NS is, for example, a list of integers. Um, so here generated automatically a list of integers. Now we save the file. It's gonna complain about the list because the list is actually an unknown type. So what I have to do, I need to add the list type so I can actually import the type and save the file. I need to click enter probably. Yes, okay. And finally we have our answer. Okay, let's go with a Spago build. And now let's open the REPL again and let's import the Euler project now. Let's have a look at answer and answer is 233168, which is the correct answer and multiplies, as you can see, got all the values and the same is for NS. All of these values are automatically exported from this module. All right, let's go ahead and let's write our test. Okay, now this one is going to be answer from the other value. And now here we're going to put the value that is coming from our project Euler. I'll try to find it in here so that I can actually copy paste it. Okay, the answer is uh, 233168. Let's have a look at Spago test. We do a build and then a test. All right, so that's everything for uh, today's videos. I hope you guys enjoyed um, our Spago pure script. And if you like this content, please leave a thumb up, subscribe to the channel, uh, watch more videos, ask questions. Uh, this really means a lot for us. Thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.